Good evening. Here is the world news from BGI TV, Baba Bagede Imo TV. I am Mori Ray Ramila Laurel. Today, the 17th day in the month of August 2022. First are the major headlines for the world news. Tinumbu to meet Obasanjo over a presidential bid today. No hiding place for kidnappers. Others are Biodun. Expose kidnappers, other criminals get monetary reward. Akiri Dulu. Zamfara government bans motorcycles, others shoots on sites. Governor Matawele steps out wearing police anti togwi uniform. National Union of Electricity employs pickets, Lagos TCN office. Embattled actor Moses Armstrong cries out says he did not rape anybody. And to foreign story, UK unveils starring free trade scheme with Nigeria. And sports, rematch. And Tony Joshua vows to smash music. Now the news in detail. Bola Ahmed Tunumbu, the All Progressive Congress APC presidential candidate, is billed to meet former president Olusha Gombasajo today in Abeokuta, Ogo State, Capital Daily Trust report. The meeting is part of his ongoing consultation and phase mining process to actualize his presidential bid. The Chief Press Secretary to Governor Dako Abiodun Kunle Shomori dropped the hint on Wednesday morning, learned that the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Ashiwa Jubala Ahmed Tunubu, will be visiting Abel Kuta of the state today, Wednesday, August 17, 2022. He is scheduled to visit President Olusha Gombasajo at 10 a.m. And address the people at the MKO Abiola International Stadium immediately after. Sean Maureen said in a test statement made available to newsmen, which must have been concluded. Another statement signed by the APC State Chairman, Yemi Sanusi, said all ESCO members and party chairmen are to attend promptly. As we are visit Ogun State, this is to inform you that the presidential candidate of uh, All Progressive Congress, APC, Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tunumbu, We'll be visiting Abelkutia Urban State today, Wednesday, August 17, 2022. Daily Trust report this is the third Tinumbu will be visiting Urban over his presidential bid. In February, he met all the paramount rulers in the state and intimidated them with his ambition. On June 2nd, Tinumbu, ahead of the party's presidential primary, met with the APC delegates in Abelkutia, where he revealed the roles he played in enthroning President Buhari in 2015. So the next story is still coming from Ogo State. Ogo State Governor Dapo Abiodu has said there will be no hiding place for criminals. He said the 17 year old kidnapped victim, Akilaja Inolua Olua Tomiwa, has escaped from captivity. The governor said the victim, who was kidnapped on his way to redemption camp on Lagos Ibado Expressway, escaped from his abductors as he separated swoop on their den in Ikorudu, Lagos. The victim, Akilaja, is a student of the Redeemers University in Osho State. He was on his way to join his parents when he was kidnapped. Our security men trailed the kidnappers to Ikorudu, where the victim was being held hostage. Their arrival on the scene gave the victim the opportunity to escape from captivity. We are happy that the victim escaped on half. He has since been reunited with his parents, he said. Apiodun, who made this note in a statement signed by his chief press secretary, Kunle Shomori, said security operatives were on the trail of the kidnappers adding that no effort will be spared to rid the state of undesirable elements. To the next story from Ondo State. Desirous to stem the spate of insecurity across Ondo State, the state government has placed a sum of 50,000 Naira as reward for anyone who exposes or reports incident leading to the arrest of criminals in the state. This was part of the decisions reached at the weekly State Executive Council meeting held in Akure, the state capital. Briefing newsmen, the Commissioner for Information and Orientation, Mrs. Bamidele Ademola Olateju, said the development was to further encourage citizens to give useful and timely information about criminal activities in any part of the state. Ademola said that from now on, anyone who reports a crime and will follow the trail and it leads to a successful prosecution of the criminal, and that person will be offered a reward of 50,000 Naira. We want people in the North State to say something when they see something. We want our people to be proactive in the area of security to rid of those states of criminals, bandits, and terrorists. The commissioner also added that the council acknowledged the appreciation 
and commendation from the residents which followed the good initiative of the government to have a toll-free line. From the southwest state, we go to not. Governor Bello Matawali of Zamfara State has banned motorcycles movement from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. in Gusau Town. Matawali gave the directive during a broadcast in the early hours of yesterday in Gusau. He directed the security personnel to shoot on sight anyone found violating the new order. The measure, according to the governor, was taken by the Security Council following report on the use of motorcycles by bandits and other criminals to perpetrate their criminal activities within the state capital and its outskirts. He said, considering the recent invasion of bandits in some areas on the outskirts of Gusau, the state capital riding of motorcycles is hereby banned from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. in all areas and outskirts of Gusau town. These areas include Merari, Damba, Tsunami, Sauni, Barakallahu, Samaru, Gadaviu, and Yeyao East. Security forces are hereby ordered to shoot anyone riding a motorcycle between 8 p.m. and 6 a.m. on the outskirts of Gusau who refuses to stop when ordered to do so by them. Moving forward to the next story, still coming from the state's governor of Zamfara State. His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Zamfara State, Dr. Belo Matawali, has provided the newly launched Community Protection Guard with 1,500 specially equipped motorcycles and 20 specially treated vans. During the flying off ceremony, Mr. Matawali was spotted wearing a police anti togri uniform as he commissioned the machineries. Speaking earlier today, he said the state government will continue to improve on the community protection guard in order to have sufficient and efficient complement of the law enforcement agents working in the state. He furthermore called on the people to remain vigilant and also report any activities of inform informants in their various communities. Matawali said the government has recently ordered for the consensus of all households in the state to fish out the bad eggs who reside among the people with sole intent to perpetrate criminality by hidden the activities of bandits. He also charged security operatives to redouble their efforts in dealing with the bandits and their collaborators in the states. From the states of Zamfara, we go to a national story concerning electricity power. Members of the National Union of Electricity Employees have picketed the Lagos Office of the Transmission Company of Nigeria following what they describe as inappropriate handling of policy matters in the electricity sector value chain, including welfare issues of members by the board of the Transmission Company of Nigeria. The workers, while chanting solidarity songs in front of the office of the Transmission Company, said the picketing was not designed to undermine the sector but to draw attention to critical issues needed to drive development in the nation's power sector. Transmission Company of Nigeria, which used to be a beehive of activities, was devoid of the usual official engagement on Tuesday. This followed the picketing of the office by the National Union of Electricity Employees, who are not happy with the board of the company. With feel that if the processes that brought this board on board have been very very open the union should have been involved at least as members of this board because whatever decisions that this board will take on one side is for the progress of the electricity industry and the workers themselves. One major bone of contention, according to the electricity workers, is the deliberate exclusion of members by the board in the areas of policy direction for the electricity sector, including matters bordering on welfare of members. The board are to make policies. We are not against the board. But at least they should allow the present management to run the board, to run the... Uh, uh, the establishment. While acknowledging the impact, continued closure of the company will have on the electricity sector, the protesting workers called on the federal government to do the needful by addressing the issues raised by members. The management themselves and the board supposed to have seen what we are asking, the impact that is going to cause on the entire nation. For now, the workers say the picketing will only... And to entertainment story. 
The embattled movie star made this known via his Facebook page on Tuesday, August 16th, 2022. Nothing past God. If you believe, you will receive. Nothing past God. I did not anybody. I don't do that, and I will never do it. I'm back stronger and better. I have, I'm happy I went to prison. The experience is awesome. You will hear from me soon. Blessings to all of you angels that believe in me. Armstrong was arrested by men of the Aquaibum State Police Command in June for allegedly making love to a lady. Reacting to the news at the time of his arrest, the president of the Actors Guild of Nigeria, Emeka Rolas, described the case as a very serious one. To get involved with a child as young as 16 is not something I and the association I do not represent would not stand for. This is a very sad development involving a member of ours, but I wouldn't want to comment any further on this, he said. Rollers revealed that the case is being handled by the First Lady of Aquaibum State, Mata Udom Emmanuel, through our Family Empowerment and Youth Reorientation Path Initiative. He also distanced the guilt from the erroneous act. He was then charged with the case of a man by supplying abortion drugs. According to Premium Times, the four charges were read to Armstrong in the state high court, sitting in Uyo, Aquaibum, on Wednesday, August 10, 2022. His counsel, Emmanuel Petalian, drew the court's attention to his bail application filed on behalf of his client on July 25th and sought the leave of the court to proceed to entertain it. The prosecution, I, you, Robert, an assistant state counsel, while opposing the bail application, cited relevant judicial authorities and ordered the court to dismiss the application, which it described as an abuse of court process. The judge, Untong, Untong, after hearing submissions from both counsels, upheld the defense counsel's application and granted bail to Mr. Armstrong in the sum of 5 million naira. From the entertainment gist, we'll go to the foreign story. Nigerians are set to benefit from a new trading scheme in the United Kingdom that will cut price tariffs on hundreds of everyday products exported into the country from 2023. The UK's International Trade Secretary, Annie Marie Trevelyan, announced this on Tuesday at the official launch of the Developing Country Trading Scheme in Abuja. In 2018, former Prime Minister of the UK, Theresa May, had hinted about a new trade deal and the economic partnership during our visit to Nigeria. The scheme means that a wide variety of products from clothes, shoes, and food items including olive oil and tomatoes imported from Africa to the UK will benefit from lower or zero tariffs. According to a statement sent to the Punch, the trading scheme will assist British businesses earn 750 million euros per year from reduced import costs, leading to more choice and lower costs for the UK consumers to help with the cost of living. Speaking at the launch, the Secretary of State for International Trade, Annie Mary Trevian, noted that the new scheme was to reduce the cost of living and help support economies of developing countries in the face of a global recession. Before we call it a wrap on the world news today, let's quickly have the sports story. Two-time former Unified World Heavyweight Champion, Anthony Joshua, has vowed to smash Alexandra Yusik in their title remarks slated for Saturday, August 20th. In an interview with Sky Sport News, Joshua, Joshua said, I wanted to outbox my opponent, whether it was Yusik or anyone else. That was the mindset in the first fight. I wanted to outbox my opponent, and on Saturday, I want to smash my opponent. That's just the mindset now. Joshua noted that the high-intensity, destructive approach were the factors responsible for any successes in his career. I was an amateur for three and a half years and I did a lot in that time and I asked myself how. It wasn't down to the skill element because I was outclassed in terms of skills and experienced by a lot of my competitors on the world scene, but the aggression, he said. I was focusing on more different things in my career, for example having a better job, hitting and not getting hit. You've got to focus on that aggressive aspect, that competitive spirit, and at the end of the day, I don't give a damn about your job. I don't care how good that job is. I don't care how good this is. I don't care how good you are. My competitive spirit will overcome all obstacles, he concluded. That ends the world news from BGI TV. Before we go, let's quickly have some major recaps. Tinubu to meet Obasanjo over presidential bid today. No hiding place for kidnappers' orders are building. And from the northwest, exposed kidnappers with talking from the government, that's from Ondo State, I beg your pardon, and from Zafara State, Governor 
bans motorcycles, others shoot on sight after the time stipulated by the governor. And lastly, on sports. Rematch, Anthony Joshua vows to smash Yusik. For more updates on YouTube and our channel on YouTube, it is by Baba Gede Imo TV. Can you subscribe and click on the notification bell, select option all, to enjoy all of our updates on Facebook by Gede Imo with Alawiye Adebayo. Please like and follow the page on Instagram by Gede Imo underscore 22. For other placement of goods and services, coverage of events and function, please dial the phone number streaming on the screen for other placement only. Thank you for watching. I am Morire Repila Lawa. Good evening. Oh, na -na -na. If you want to know what's going on in city, or you want to listen to the latest news and gist, no stress, oh, just tune to BGITV. BGITV. Yeah, I want in the video.